Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfat. Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and the chairperson of the advisory board of the National Initiative for the Development of the Agricultural Sector, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, patronized the ceremony inaugurating the Water Guardian Development Project, where she stated that it was established in 1948 and is connected to the national memory as an aesthetic heritage establishment, a recreational area for citizens and residents, and a new tourist destination. Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King, hailed the national efforts in increasing agricultural and green areas in proportion to urban areas, represented by the procedures of government plans to establish gardens and parks and protect plants and natural reserves and implementation of Bahrain strategies to develop the agricultural sector, which stem from the directives of His Majesty the King, and the follow-up of the government led by His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, for the importance that government plans attached to the agricultural sector as one of the contributors to the national economy. Her Royal Highness commended the efforts of a number of public and private sector institutions in implementing the development plans in a manner that restores it as a landmark in Bahrain and part of its environment-friendly green areas. Her Royal Highness toured the garden where she was briefed on its development and rehabilitation to be an integrated entertainment facility to keep pace with Bahrain's development and growth, in addition to its water bodies that reflect interest in the environmental aspect. The Minister of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture, Engineer Wa'al Lambarak, thanked Her Royal Highness on the occasion of her patronage of the ceremony, praising her follow-up and support for projects aimed at increasing green areas and the initiatives of afforestation and beautification in the kingdom. Limbarak said that this project comes within an integrated system of gardens, parks and recreational areas in various regions of the kingdom, which came within the framework of His Majesty the King's Comprehensive Development March, with the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. Limbarak praised all those who contributed to the completion and development of this project, including ministries, government institutions, the Capital Municipalities Council and the National Initiative for the Development of the Agricultural Sector. He also thanked Popco for undertaking the management of the garden's maintenance operations and its facilities after its opening. The water garden has an area of 6 hectares and has been operating since January 2019 with an estimated budget of 3.2 million Bahraini dinars. It is one of the largest public gardens in the kingdom with water bodies, walkways, playing areas for children, about 300 car parks and a number of public facilities. We are very lucky to uh, really complete this uh, major project. Uh, we are lucky to have this beautiful garden back to its uh, full shape and even better than it used to be. And I welcome uh, all people interested to come and visit this place. Uh, it's really a great achievement. Uh, thanks to all the people. It's, it's a, it, it is a teamwork uh, with all the entities within the government who managed to really put their great efforts to make it such a, a great uh, place. Uh, I am sure people when they visit the place they will find it wonderful and uh, bring happiness and joy and we are contributing towards the environment uh, with this great achievement. A press conference was held by the special representative of His Majesty the King, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa Award for a Service to Humanity, Azana Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, and members of the Board of Trustees of the award, in the presence of various local, regional, and international media representatives, to announce the winner of the fifth edition of the Isa Award for a Service for Humanity. Speaking at the press conference, His Highness affirmed that the award, which was established by His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa, recalls the generous, caring and selfless contributions of the late His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa to humanity. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed hailed His Majesty the King's establishment of the award, which commemorates the memory of the late Emir and his noble legacy in service to humanity and establishing the modern state. Nepalese ophthalmologist Dr. Sandu Kroot was selected as the winner of the fifth edition of the award.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أصحاب المعالي والسعادة الحضور الكرام يسرني أن نلتقي في رحاب جائزة عيسى لخدمة الإنسانية لنستذكر في الإجلال والتقدير الروح الكريمة الخيرة لصاحب العظمة الشيخ عيسى بن سلمان آل خليفة طيب الله تراه مشيدا بمبرة حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المعظم حفظه الله ورعاه ومبادرة جلالته بإنشاء هذه الجائزة تخليدا لذكراه واحتفاء بمواقفه وأعماله الإنسانية ودوره الكبير في تأسيس الدولة الحديثة لتبقى هذه الجائزة شعلة خير وتكريم لمن يسهم في خدمة البشرية جمعاء إن هذه الجائزة ومنذ انطلاقتها في فبراير عام 2009 وعبر دوراتها الأربع تؤكد إيمان مملكة البحرين بقيادة حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المعظم بروح التسامح والتعايش المشترك والحرص على الاستكشاف والتعريف بأصحاب السب في مجالات العمل الإنساني وتكريمهم من واقع المبادئ التي أنشئت من أجلها الجائزة من أجل ذلك عمل مجلس أمناء الجائزة وبجهد وعمل متواصل مع أمانة الجائزة ولجنة التحكيم المؤلفة من شخصيات عالمية من ذوي الخبرة والكفاءة العلمية والقانونية والأكاديمية في البحث والتحري بما تلقته أمانة الجائزة من أعمال إنسانية من مترشحين لنجزة الجائزة الذين بلغ عددهم 139 مترشحا من جميع أنحاء العالم لدورتها الخامسة 2021-2022 تم استعراض القائمة واختصارها إلى خمسة مترشحين ممن تنطبق عليهم شروط نيل الجائزة وبحسب نظام الأساسي للجائزة والإجراءات المتبعة قام مجلس أمناء الجائزة باستعراض أعمال الخمسة مترشحين حيث تقرر أن يقوم فريق عمل ميداني بالسفر والتحري من عمل المترشحين للفوز بالجائزة وبناء على ما جاء به تقرير الفريق الميداني وفي ضوء الاجتماع والتداول التي عقدها مجلس أمناء الجائزة فقد تقرر منح الجائزة لطبيب العيون الدكتور ساندروك رويت من النيبال تكريماً لعمله وجهوده الإنسانية التي سيقوم أمين عام الجائزة السيد علي عبد الله خليفة بتقديم نبذة عن سيرة الفائز وأعماله وإنجازاته في المجال الإنسانية وشكراً His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak highlighted that since the inception of the award in February 2009 and through its five editions, it affirmed Bahrain's firm commitment in light of its comprehensive development march under the leadership of His Majesty the King and with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to uphold the values of tolerance and coexistence. His Highness noted that the Kingdom is always keen on honoring and recognizing individuals and institutions that have spearheaded humanitarian work and served humanity. Isa Award for his service to humanity Secretary General Ali Abdullah Khalifa said that 145 candidates from across the world had applied for the award in its fifth session 2021-22 to and that 139 applicants were accepted after validating their applications. He added that the Board of Trustees and the Secretary General of the award alongside the judging panel consisting of world-renowned personalities representing the five continents worked diligently to review and evaluate all applications. The applications were then shortlisted to five in accordance with the terms and conditions of the award. For his part, the president of the judging committee, Professor Jean Paulson, spoke about the tasks of the committee and the selection criteria in line with the objectives and principles of the award.
The Representatives Council held its weekly session presided over by its speaker, Ahmed bin Salman Lim Salim. The session approved the report of the Financial and Economic Affairs Committee to amend some provisions of the agreement establishing the Gulf International Bank, a Bahraini joint stock company, and was referred to the Shura Council. It approved the report to, to, of the Services Committee to amend some provisions of Decree by Law No. 11 of 1995 regarding the protection of antiquities and was referred to the Shura Council. The Council also reviewed a number of proposals regarding compensating the overtime of civil service authority employees with cash in lieu of rest hours, camping season and the government's expansion of the Mohammed Jassim Kano Health Centre. The Bureau of the Parliament met under the chairmanship of the Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Ahmed bin Salman Lim Salim. The meeting praised the achievements and successes of Bahraini diplomacy thanks to the wise approach and vision of His Majesty the King and the foreign policy that is based on moderation and balance, consolidating the values and principles of dialogue, coexistence and humanity in, ad in addition to strengthening bilateral relations in various fields with brotherly and friendly countries. The Bureau also expressed pride and appreciation for the high status of the Bahraini diplomacy in the international community, its influential and effective role, and its support for peace, security, stability, and prosperity efforts in the region, thanks to the Royal Vision support and follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. It praised the efforts of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, all its employees and diplomatic missions in supporting the interests of the Kingdom and citizens abroad, as well as strengthening the bonds of brotherhood and friendship with all countries. The Bureau affirmed that Diplomacy Day is the culmination of all Bahraini diplomatic efforts in promoting mutual respect and common interests with all countries. The Attorney General Dr. Ali bin Fadl Bouainin held a press conference to announce its annual statistics for 2022 in the presence of the Assistant Attorney General, Councillor Wa'al Rashid Ba'alai, and the First Attorney General and Head of Judicial Inspection, Councillor Dr. Ahmed Al Hamadi. Al Bouainin said that one of the aspects of modernization and development conducted by the public prosecution in 2022 was due to the need to work and to ensure adequate and prompt investigations, adding that the cybercrime prosecution was established to specialize in investigating and handling cases related to attacks on electronic means, data and information. Due to the seriousness of drug crimes on individuals and society and their harmful effects on the state's humanitarian and economic foundations, the Drug Crimes Unit was established to investigate drug crimes in coordination with the International Cooperation Office to prosecute perpetrators. He stated that the public prosecution is planning to use AI technology technology as soon as possible with the aim of speeding up completion by establishing an electronic system with a database. He thanked the members of the public prosecution and its employees for their efforts during 2022, which resulted in the achievement rate of 98%, stressing the public prosecution's continuation in developing its tools and strengthening its capabilities to carry out its judicial tasks entrusted to meet the requirements of justice. And to speak more about the annual press conference of the public prosecution, we have with us on the phone Public Prosecutor Ibrahim Al Fadala. Hello, Mr. Ibrahim. Can you tell us more about the achievements of the public prosecution which were outlined in today's press conference? And the annual press conference held by the public prosecution today to announce the achievements during the year 2022. His Excellency, the Attorney General, Dr. Ali bin Fadal Bounin, gave a speech explaining the access of this achievement which rated 98%. He explained the aspects of development that took place in order to raise the level of performance, including the establishment of cybercrime prosecution and drug combating units, which are specialized and investigate and deal with the crimes committed in their field. In his speech, His Excellency reviewed the initiative of the public prosecution and the contribution to strengthening the kingdom's efforts care and protection of the human rights, including the result of the public prosecution social initiative Ra'aya, which was launched by the public prosecution as a, as a contribution to the national efforts in the field of child, women, and family care. On the other hand, His Excellency noted the organization of the public prosecution officers and its participation in many training courses and national and international events to develop the capabilities of the members. 
The annual statistics for the year 2022 were presented, which included the numbers of cases received by the public prosecution officers during that year, with the percentage of that achievement for the year 2022, as I mentioned at the beginning, is 98%. Thank you very much. And that was Public Prosecutor Ibrahim al fadala Thank you for joining us. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Zayani, attended the meeting with the Minister of Legal Affairs, Yusuf Khalaf, as part of the Diplomatic Forum 2023. The Minister of Legal Affairs expressed thanks and appreciation to Zayani for providing the opportunity to participate in the forum, praising the efforts made in organizing the forum. Khalaf affirmed that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, gives considerable importance to the legislative structure to reach the best international practices, noting the importance of continuing communication, consultation and cooperation between the Ministry of Legal Affairs and the diplomatic missions of Bahrain abroad at the level of the legislative and legal structure and system. During the meeting, the importance of the agreement signed between Bahrain and various broadly and friendly countries was emphasized and the role of the Ministry of Legal Affairs in following up and implementing the agreements concluded and getting acquainted with the policy of new legislation. As they and he expressed thanks and appreciation to Khalaf for his participation, stressing the importance of the legislative and legal environments in various fields. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also attended the meeting with the Secretary General for the Supreme Council for Women, the SCW, Halal Ansari, as part of the Diplomatic Forum 2023. Lansari expressed thanks and appreciation to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for its efforts in following up on Bahrain's commitments in cooperation with the relevant international bodies and in building a cooperation with various brotherly and friendly countries. She also expressed appreciation for the support that Bahraini women receive from His Majesty see the King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the SCW led by Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King, Princess Sabika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, which contributed to supporting women's progress to pursue more national achievements and assume leadership and diplomatic positions. She stated that the efforts and role of Her Royal Highness in promoting peace and development through multilateral relations at the political and economic levels is positively received at international organizations, for most of which they United Nations. A presentation was screened on Bahraini diplomacy and the progress of women. The Minister of Labour and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Labour Market Regularity Authority, Jamil bin Mohammed Ali Hamedan, held a meeting with the UAE Minister of Human Resources and Emiratization, Abdurrahman Al Awar. Bahrain's delegation was briefed on the policies implemented in UAE towards the development of the labour market and human resources, as well as the initiatives that have been implemented in the field of applying the unemployment insurance system, the wage protection system, and ways to strengthen control over the labor markets in addition to reviewing the UAE experience in the field of developing professional standards and adopting them at the national level. The minister affirmed the depth of the Bahraini-UAE relations. For his part, the UAE minister praised Bahrain's pioneering experience in regulating and developing the labor markets, praising the pioneering programs implemented by the kingdom in employment and human resource supports and protecting workforce rights. The chairman of the Electricity and Water Authority, Iwa Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed, the Minister of Oil and Environment, the Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Barak bin Dana, and the Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Yasser Ahmedan, participated in a government delegation in the opening ceremony of Abu Dhabi Sustainability Week, ADSW, inaugurated under the patronage of the UAE President, Zana Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. Iwa chairman praised the UAE's efforts in organizing this global event to the Discuss development mechanisms and unify efforts towards ensuring a secure future and developing climate neutrality. He stressed the kingdom's interest in the future of energy, resource development and sustainability. The chairman highlighted Bahrain's aim to preserve its environmental future and global treaties. Minister Maidan stressed the ADSW's keenness towards international solidarity and achieve the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. He noted the ministry's strategies to achieve the Kingdom's goal of zero carbon neutrality by 2060. 
The Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications announced the installation of the simulation system for the most modern air traffic control tower in the region. Transportation and Telecommunications Minister Mohammed bin Thamar al kabi expressed the pleasure that air controllers have started training on the new simulation system, which supports the ministry's plans to develop Bahraini caters in the field of air traffic management. He stressed the importance of the new system in providing an environment similar to the reality of the operations of the actual air traffic control tower at Bahrain International Airport in addition to simulating multiple scenarios, emergency training and provides practical experience of best practices in air traffic management and the airport and reducing expenses related to external training for air traffic controllers. The Secretary General of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, the RHF, Dr. Mustafa Sayyid, held a media briefing regarding the foundation, its vision and mission, the tasks it performs, the geographical scope of its work, and projects at the local and international levels organized by the National Contact Center in the presence of regional and international media representatives. Sayyid affirmed that Bahrain, through the RHF, seeks to perform charitable work and implement development and humanitarian projects projects in a way that contributes to strengthening social solidarity inside and outside the kingdom. As Sayyid said that RHF provided comprehensive care to over 11,000 orphans and widows from various cities and villages in the kingdom, noting the interest of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa and his keenness to provide educational care and honor outstanding students. The chairman of Elba Board of Directors, Sheikh Daij bin Salman bin Daij Al Khalifa, and the CEO Ali Al Bakali witnessed the successful inauguration of the forced cooling network project in the fourth and fifth smelting lines in the presence of a number of senior officials in the company and the work teams responsible for the project. The forced cooling network project increased the power of the electric current in the fourth and fifth smelting lines, which will increase the company's production capacity. Elba's chairman said that the project is among the main aspects of the company's five-year strategic plan and is one of the company's innovative and ambitious initiatives as it was implemented without pausing operations in the fourth and fifth smelting lines which affirms the presence of high-level technical and operational expertise in Elba. And the co-CEO of Bahrain's InvestCorp holding company, Hazem bin Qasim, said that the company is working on multiple initiatives in Indonesia, including an initiative in partnership with the Kingdom's Sovereign Wealth Fund as it seeks to expand in Southeast Asia. In a statement to Reuters Forum for Global Markets, which is being held on the sidelines of the World Economic Forum in Davos, he explained that the first initiative is related to the Indian dialysis service provider, Nefroplus, which which is set to expand in Indonesia and the second to a leading local retail company which was recently acquired.